At this moment, there are at least 10 areas in town where looters have broken in and where firebombs have set fires. It looks like a B-52 raid in Detroit. Isn't that amazing? That is John Hart reporting for CBS News 50 years ago on the social unrest that ignited the city of Detroit. Police raided an unlicensed bar in a black neighborhood in 1967, and that led to the 12th Street riots. The violence was in response to police brutality and decades of racial inequality. Over five days, more than 40 people died, and more than 2,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed. The new movie, Detroit, centers on that brutality that happened at the Algiers Motel during the riots. Three unarmed black teenagers were shot dead by white police officers. Detroit is directed by Catherine Bigelow of The Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. Actor Anthony Mackie portrays a real-life Vietnam War veteran who was at the motel. It says right there, paratrooper eight years, two deployments, honorable discharge. This is a fake. No, sir. It's your girl? I just met her. What's his name? I don't know. His name is Carl Green. Wasn't asking you, I was asking her. You what's just his name? Said, what's his name? You're lucky I haven't broken your neck yet. <laughs> All right, man, I see what you're trying to do. I'm not gonna cause any trouble, okay? But I'm not gonna lie down for you either. Well, Catherine Bigelow and Anthony Mackie are with us now in their first live interview together for the movie. Good morning. Good Great morning. to have both Thank of you, you here. Entertainment Weekly says it's, quote, an American horror story rooted so deep, deeply and shamefully in home soil that it is still painful to watch half a century later. And it is painful. Painful to watch and so relatable today. And so That's relatable. What's scary. Yeah. What made you want to tell this story? Well, predominantly that, that it is so relatable to today. When I was first introduced to it, it was right around the time of Ferguson, Missouri. And I'm thinking, this is 50 years ago today, and yet it's happening today. It's happening tomorrow. It's happening, you know, it, it's recurring far too often. And so I, I hope that it could perhaps invite a dialogue to encourage a bridge between a, an incredible racial divide in this country. Mm -hmm. Did it feel very personal for you, Anthony? Uh, very much so. Um, you know, it's funny being a parent of little boys. You know, you try to put, do work that they can watch and relate and learn from. And uh, when I read the script and read Green and that character specifically, uh, I knew Catherine would give me that opportunity. How did you go about it, Catherine, in terms of, as a director, in terms of finding real-life stories that you could incorporate into the movie? Well, as uh, predominantly I use court records and testimonies and FOIA requests, the information that we got from that. So tremendous amount of research. And Mark Bull, who wrote The Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty, wrote the screenplay. And it was, I thought, a really tremendous screenplay. Mm -hmm. And also uh, met with real life people who were involved in this incident. There was Melvin Dismukes, who's in the movie played by John Boyega. And Hannah Murray is the character of Julie, who is the, a real character, Julie Heisel, who is with me on the set every day. And then Larry Reed, who plays a member of, the, of a Motown group called The Dramatics. And so hearing their rendition of this situation and the horror that they went through really galvanized my Could determination to tell the story. Could Detroit happen today? <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh. it's it seems all, all far too likely mm -hmm. in many respects. But, the, but I'm really encouraged by a conversation beginning. There was a screening last night on Capitol Hill hosted by uh, Representative Conyers. Who's in the movie. Who's in the movie played yeah. by Laz Alonzo. Mm -hmm. And he is, is uh, furthering a bill to end racial profiling. And so I think this film could hopefully, hopefully encourage that conversation. Catherine, John Boyega said this about you the other day. If she asked me to read the friggin' phone book, I would do that. That's how badly he wanted to work with you. But Anthony, I want to talk to you about your character because he's still living. Did you meet with him before you took this part? Well, he, <clears throat> he hasn't, we haven't been able to find him. Would you have um, wanted to meet with him? No. I, Why not? Because as an actor, the best tool you have is what the writer gives you, and that's the script. Mm -hmm. And what I would hate to have happened was have a meet, one chance meeting with this man and um, inform or correct 
what we had cre created with this story. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was more important for someone like Mark Bowl mm -hmm. to meet him and then create that. But I think it says a lot about his character and dignity that he was the first person to speak out about this tragedy. Yeah. Um, he was one of the, the guys in the, uh, in the hotel being a military vet that had an understanding of how to survive. Mm. Um, and I think with this movie, the most important message that comes out of it is survival. Uh, you kind of laughed when I asked sort of the question about could Detroit happen today because you think that it, the possibility of just needing an incident to cause a city to go up in flames? Um, I think if you look at the 1920s, if you look at the 1960s, if you look at the 2000 teens, we are right now in that decade of turmoil and combustion. I feel like America every 50 years goes through a, a, a resurgence, a, gro a growth. And uh, from that growth, the country transforms dramatically. And right now, we're in that, that pressure cooker mm -hmm. that all we need to do is add a match, and it'll explode. Wow. And the two of you haven't been together since Hurt Locker. I think there must be a comfort level between the two of you. Uh -huh. yeah. What it was like on a yeah. set that I would think would be very difficult. It was very tough watching the movie for me. What this must have been like on the set. Yeah. For both of you, um, you know, there was a common understanding. There, there was a common understanding on set, and it was a safe zone. And uh, Catherine is very good at putting her actors in um, a uh, progressive, uh, affordable environment to do good work. Mm -hmm. Catherine, well, I just was so honored to be able to work with Anthony again. I, I, it, it's a memory I'll treasure forever. All right. Well, we'll be, we'll right. be right back. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.